God so loved the world, the entire world that is, all of his children and all of his creation, so much that he poured himself out for us, even to the point of death on a cross. We, his children, have always been in need of a redeemer, but it seems now that our need is more acute than ever. The sins of violence and racism in our nation have been amplified and added on to an already chaotic situation created by a pandemic. We wonder, how can this be happening? We all agree we have to do something. But exactly what needs to be done and how doesn't always enjoy great consensus. When I was in college, I read a story that describes what social scientists call the street lamp effect. The story goes something like this. A man was walking down the street and saw another man bent over underneath a lamppost, searching the ground. The first man started a dialogue. Have you lost something? Yes, I lost my keys. Where do you remember last having seen them? Well, I had them back there in that dark alley, and I think that is probably where I dropped them. So why are you looking here? Well, because the light is better under this lamppost. We are all looking for answers to our societal problems, but where are we looking? Is anyone looking at the Catholic Church or organized religion in general? Many of our civic leaders have told us that religious services are non-essential. Is it possible that they see us as non-essential because that's how we see ourselves? Church attendance has been declining for many years. Many Catholics appear to think Sunday Mass is optional. I've read surveys that say most Catholics don't believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. If we don't take ourselves seriously, why should anyone else? In June of 1979, Pope John Paul II visited his homeland in Poland. The people of Poland had been living under an oppressive communist regime. On the last days of the Pope's visit, he said mass for two, for two million people in Warsaw. As he started to preach, something happened. A small group of people began chanting three words and it began to spread. They chanted, we want God. At first hundreds of people, then thousands. Soon two million people were chanting, we want God. For 17 minutes, two million people who had gathered together to sacrifice, to celebrate the holy sacrifice of mass, chanted, we want God. Years later, the archives of the Russian spy agency KGB became public. In it, there was a telegram from the KGB commandant who was present at that mass in Warsaw. The telegram ended with a different set of three words. It's all over. He was referring to Soviet domination of Poland, and he was right. The kingdom of God had risen up, and no human political force could overpower it. The coronavirus shows how an invisible germ can bring illness to an entire body how that illness can spread rapidly from person to person, bringing fear, disease, isolation, and disunity to millions of people. What happened in Poland in 1979 shows us how our primal need for God, like kindling waiting for a spark, 
can also spread rapidly among people and can bring hope and freedom and God's love and eternal life to anyone who believes in him. Like us today, the apostles were hiding behind closed doors when the risen Christ first appeared to them. The first words Christ said to them was, peace be with you. Weeks later, the Holy Spirit gifted them with unity and courage and the power to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The church grew exponentially on that day. Jesus brought the peace and the Holy Spirit brought the power. Where are we looking for peace and power? Are we looking in the right places? Have we abdicated our power to bring peace to the material world because we've abdicated our responsibility to be leaders in the spiritual world? Because we don't have time for God. And when we do give him time, we expect him to deliver a five-star meal on a McDonald's budget. And I am guilty of this. If you are hearing my voice now, it is because the Holy Mass matters to you. We hear speculation about our, what our post-pandemic new normal will be. Who will define the new normal, especially as it pertains to religious practice, religious freedom, religious influence, religious participation in the new normal? You and I will either be players or spectators. Our church, our nation, and our world need us. Will we put the same effort into spreading the infection of the Holy Spirit as we put into stopping the spread of coronavirus? Father Raniero Cantala Mesa has been the preacher to the papal household since 1980. He's the only person allowed to preach to the Pope. He has written that the agent of the new Catholic evangelization is and must be the laity. I wholeheartedly agree. Most of the truly great preaching I have witnessed in person has come from lay people who were filled with the Holy Spirit and were living Pentecost in the moment. And I was just lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time to receive it. At some of those times, I could physically feel the contagion of the Holy Spirit enter me and change me. There's only one power that can fix the steaming mess our world is in right now. You and I can wield that power, but we need to get back to the basics as Catholics. Here's a simple way to start. Every Catholic needs to go to confession, go to Mass, and receive the Eucharist. Mm -hmm.